So knowing that the banks are going to require a lot more in order to qualify, how do you prepare for that? Well, one, going to have to look at the fact that a lot of people are going to have to cut expenses and wait for the real estate prices to start going down. I mean, why buy in a relatively high interest rate? And I say relatively because historically, we are not high. Historically, we're about an average. But relative to the last decade, you know, people are used to extremely low rate mortgages, two to three to four percent. So are we high now? No, we're not high. But relative to the recent period, of course, that's considered high. And if you're depending on when you graduated college or left high school and started working and started being able to have a steady enough income where you can think about getting a mortgage. Yeah, you thought, hey, you know, I can buy a house. But you were thinking in a period where you had a ZERP, which is a ZERP, if you've ever heard that acronym, it stands for Zero Interest Rate Policy. Okay, and that's basically policy buying from the Fed, right? Now, we know that the 10-year treasury is what is the benchmark that's used to establish 30-year mortgages. If you didn't, now you know. And that's been the benchmark for since we've had these mortgage-backed securities that have been able to go on the secondary market, right? Which a lot of them have FHA you know, guidelines, federal guidelines in order to get sold, right? So that's usually what the banks look first. They look at what, what are the guidelines because the banks are not holding those loans. They're going to sell those loans, right? They're going to sell those loans and they're going to sell them on the secondary market and they're going to loan more money out, right? But see, what you don't understand is that most people don't understand and get it, get it wrong is banks are not in the business of lending money. Banks are in the business of Barring securities. Happening. Banks, what are they then? They're creators of the money supply. So you're firmly of the view that banks create money out of thin air? Yes, well, I, I produced the first empirical studies to prove that um, in the 5,000 year history of banking. Banks are thought of as uh, deposit taking institutions that lend money. The legal reality is banks don't take deposits and banks don't lend money. So what is a deposit? A deposit is not actually a deposit. It's not a bailment. It's not held in custody. Uh, at law, the word deposit is meaningless. The law courts and various judgments have made it very clear if you give your money to a bank, even though it's called a deposit, this money is simply a loan to the bank. That's true. Yeah. So there is no such thing as a deposit. So you think it's poorly in its to the bank. name then? So mm. banks borrow from the public. Okay, so that much we've established. What about lending? Surely they're lending money. Um, no, they don't. Banks don't lend money. Banks, again, at law, it's very clear, they're in the business of purchasing securities. That's it. So you say, okay, don't you know, confuse me with all that legalese. No, I want fine. a loan. I want a loan. Yeah. Fine. Here's the loan contract. Here's the offer letter. And you sign. At law, it's very clear, you have issued a security, namely a promissory note. And the bank is going to purchase that. That's what's happening. Put at it law. in layman's terms. What does that mean? It means that um, what the bank is doing is very different from what it presents to the public that it's doing. How does this fit together? So you say, fine, the bank purchases my promissory note, but how do I get my money? I want, you know, it's a I loan. Want I want my money. Grand, right? I don't care about the details. I want the money. The bank will say, well, you'll find it in your account with us. That would be technically correct. If they say, we'll transfer it to your account, that's wrong because no money is transferred at all it's already from in anywhere inside the bank or outside the bank. Why? Because what we call a deposit is simply the bank's record of its debt to the public. Now, it also owes you money, and its record of the money it owes you is what you think you're getting as money. And that's all it is. And that is how the banks create the money supply. The money supply consists to 97% of bank deposits. And these are created out of nothing by banks when they lend because they invent fictitious customer deposits. Why? They simply restate, slightly incorrectly in accounting terms, what is an accounts payable liability arising from the loan contract having purchased your promissory note as 
a customer deposit, but nobody has deposited any money. I wonder how the FCA deals with this, because in the financial sector, you're supposed to not mislead your customers. <laughs> um, anyway, I so, I, I, I don't the so, the, so the banks create the money supply yes. by inventing these claims on themselves, the, you know, the fictitious deposits. That can be actually positive for the economy, as long as this money creation is in line with the creation of new goods and services, uh, implementation of new technologies, and therefore adding value and adding value in the economy is funded by this money creation. If that happens, and we're talking about um, business investment, productive loans, productive bank credit, you will have no inflation. These loans can also be serviced and repaid. You have a stable economy without problems and with low inequality. And so country... Okay. I can understand that. When you open a bank account, a bank account at law, you're not making a deposit just in an account. You're lending that bank money, okay? Banks need two things. A certain amount of capital ratio. Why? Because they need to be able to give their depositors money back when they need it because you're in a demand account. That's what your checking account is. It's a demand account, demand deposit account. And what you got to understand is that they need securities as well. Right, so they're holding those securities, and they use those securities as collateral. All right, so I don't want to get all banky on you. I'll save that for another video. But it's important to really understand what the banks are really doing, and that's basically they're creating money. Right, the Fed creates a certain amount of money or credit, and the banks come in and they create money in the commercial banking system, right? So when you create a loan, poof, new currency. I don't really want to say money because it's not money, it's currency, right? Money is defined, Article 1, Section 10 of the Constitution is gold and silver. That's the only money that exists. So what we're using is legal tender, okay? You don't know the difference between legal and law? There is a difference. Talk to an attorney. Who understands that unfortunately a lot of them don't understand that either but you can also read for yourself all right get you a black's law dictionary when you start looking at some of these banking terms you look at the legal definitions behind them you will be amazed at how different it is from the normal nomenclature in terms of how you use it in everyday speak because it's not the same I guarantee you that. When you read things at law, they are not the same. And that includes banking law. Okay? You know, there are finance books out here where you can look up on LexisNexis. There's thousand dollar books. I've seen a eight thousand dollar banking book before on LexisNexis. And that's not even the most expensive. I'm not talking about a whole volume of set. I'm talking about one book that had maybe, you know, thousand, fifteen hundred pages one book that costs thousands of dollars right and that's not uncommon but does the average person look at those books of course not if you're a banking attorney well, then you are very familiar with a lot of those books so a lot of this though comes from just simple reading the average person after college after high school I mean, it's the amount of books you've read I mean just think yourself you know you don't have to tell anybody just be honest with yourself. How many books, how many nonfiction books have you read? Now, out of those nonfiction books that you've read, how many of those actually focus on understanding the law of the land that you live in? And the law, or should I say the jurisdiction, actually. Some people get what I'm, pick up what I'm putting down. But once you understand laws versus codes and statutes, there is a difference. And if you don't understand that there's a difference, it's because you're probably not reading. So you have to read in order to understand this stuff. And what I'm telling you is that these banks are not going to tell you that the housing collapse is coming. Just like they didn't tell you back in 2007, 2006. Did they let you know? Most, no. Most major institutions, no. Now, were there people on their soapbox like Peter Schiff and... Martin Weiss talking about this at the top of their lungs, screaming with a bullhorn. Yeah, 
There were. There were people, but these aren't people that the average person is going to follow because the average person is not going to invest time into following people that are really worthwhile to understand what's going on in the economy and how to invest their money or how to manage their portfolio. Because at the end of the day, guess what? You have a financial advisor and they lose you money. At the end of the day, you put your trust in them to manage your money. Right? So you made the decision. So at the end of the day, you're responsible for that decision. Because you that's who you chose. So remember that. So this is my little blurb. I had to get that off my mind, man. I was looking at Bordinato, Bordinero's uh video and just it just sparked some thought, man. What we really gotta do as a nation. Nation. Not black, not white, not Asian, not Indian, not Hispanic, Mexican, whatever. No, as a nation, as a body collective of people, we the people, we need to start reading more. We need to start understanding these things. And once we start to understand these things, trust me, you're going to start voting a lot different. A lot different because you're going to understand the money, the backing, the politicians. And guess what? You want to know who your lawmaker is? Look who's sponsoring the person you're voting for. What is that? That's who the lawmaker is, right? Because it's the golden rule. Even though they're not using any gold and not using any real money, just using currency, right? Currency is debt driven, right? It's not based off of any physical metal. It's not based off any tangible good. It says what it's based off of right on the dollar, based on the full faith and credit of the United States. Well, who is the United States? Well, the United States is a corporation. You can look that up. You can look at look up go to Delaware Secretary of State. Look up United States Corporation Company. Go to Delaware. Go to California. Go to Florida. I'm just pointing those out because those are some of the bigger cities that or excuse me, bigger states that deal with a lot of businesses. Right? Business entities. Physical location and just paper location, right? So once you start looking at that stuff, you'll start to understand that. Like, look. There's some questionable things going on. Guess what? You don't have the knowledge. What could you possibly question?